Hey there folks, love them or hate them, Beats Studio headphones are among the most popular headphones of all time. This is the fourth generation of them, the Beats Studio Pro, and they carry the same $350 list price as the previous model and look very similar on the outside, though there are some big changes on the inside that make it a significantly better headphone. Was it a good idea to keep the same design? I'm not so sure, but let's get right into my full review so we can discuss all that and find out how these stack up against other premium noise canceling headphones like Sony's WH-1000X Mark V. Okay, so I guess there was a lot of internal debate over at Apple, which owns Beats, about the design of these headphones. I personally like to see some pretty big design changes from generation to generation, particularly when the last version of this headphone, the Beats Studio 3 wireless, came out nearly six years ago. But the other argument is why mess with success will stick with this iconic design and just make some tweaks to it and not try to reinvent anything. And that's what we got here. The two biggest changes are the addition of USB-C charging and new ear pads. They don't have stitching anymore, and they've been upgraded with higher grades of both memory foam and engineered faux leather. They're definitely a little bit, you know, better memory foam, a little bit squishier. They're apparently more durable, and I thought they made the headphones a touch more comfortable. Also, the seamless design creates a better seal around your ear that helps keep outside noise from getting in and helps with noise canceling performance. On a more cosmetic level, there's no obnoxious beat logo on the exterior of the headband, which I appreciated. And there's also no little Studio Wireless 3 here on the side that's kind of gaudy. And the headphones now have just a label on the left inside of the headband and not the right. I guess that's all you really need is that, you know, the left from the right. You just need one left. Finally, the headphones do incorporate more recycled materials. I can't say I ever liked the hard case that came with previous studio models. But it was protective, it was bulky, and had no pockets for cables. Thankfully, Beats has moved to a new rectangular soft case that does have some pockets and is overall better, though it is a little harder to get the headphones in and out of the case. The headphones do feature the same single hinge design that allows you to fold the headphones up but not flat. The first two versions of the Studio headphones had some issues with the durability of that hinge and the headband cracking and snapping over time but Beach largely overcame those flaws with the Studio 3 wireless, and this headphone does feel durable. The only thing I note is that the darker colored versions, like the deep brown I'm holding here, do end up showing some fingerprints and grime from your hands. I like the brown, and the navy looks pretty good too, but the sandstone color is probably the one you want if you don't want to deal with smudging. As far as comfort goes, these are actually quite comfortable but I found the Sony WH-1000X Mark V's a little more comfortable. They're a bit lighter at 249 grams versus 260 grams for these Beats, and they also don't clamp quite as tightly as the Beats. The AirPods Max are significantly heavier, but I also found them slightly more comfortable due to their headband's mesh design at the top and the design of their ear pads. Okay, let's move on to features before I get into sound quality along with noise canceling and voice calling performance. On the feature side, there are a lot of upgrades, but also some misses. In many ways, the features are similar to what you get with the Beats Studio Buds Plus earbuds. And like those buds, the Studio Pro are geared toward both Apple and Android users and are powered by a custom Beats chip, not Apple's H1 or H2 chip. They're equipped with Bluetooth 5.3. Android users are able to take advantage of Google Fast Pair and download the Beats app for Android to their devices. Interestingly, there's multi-point Bluetooth pairing for Android users with automatic switching between devices linked to your Google account. However, if you're an Apple user, the Buds link to your iCloud account, but you'll have to manually switch between devices, which some people do prefer because auto switching can be a bit wonky and irritating. I didn't do a ton of testing with these headphones with Android devices, but I did do a little bit, and Android users appear to not get two features. Uh, one of them is spatial audio with head tracking, and hands-free Siri, that's the feature where you can access Apple's voice assistant by just saying the Siri wake command. Unlike the Buds Plus, these do have spatial audio with head tracking for Apple users for video watching. In my test using an iPhone 14 Pro, it does appear to be on par with the spatial audio you get with the AirPods Max and AirPods Pro 2. And for both Apple and Android users, there's a Find My feature that helps locate 
your headphones should they become lost, but it's not the more advanced precision finding that's included with the AirPods Pro 2. The one big miss here is the lack of ear detection sensors so your music doesn't automatically pause when you take the headphones off and resume when you put them back on. Most $350 over-ear headphones have this feature. I also think it was a mistake for Beats not to power these with Apple's H2 chip. I don't know, it might be a cost-saving move, but going forward you won't get feature upgrades designed for that chip. Right now it's only in the AirPods Pro 2, but I assume it's coming to the next generation of the AirPods Max and maybe even the Beats Fit Pro 2 whenever those turn up. I did find that the headphones perform very well. The noise canceling is quite effective. It's the adaptive variety, so it's not a fixed setting, and occasionally I'd hear it shift in strength as it adjusted to the ambient noise around me, whether I was on the subway or walking the streets of New York. Yeah, so I'm in the streets of New York City here, uh, a lot of cars in the background, and testing the noise canceling, and you can hear it still, but it's definitely way muffled. Everything's way muffled, uh, so very good noise canceling overall. It may not be the best out there, but it approaches what you get from top noise canceling headphones from Sony and Bose. And the transparency mode allows you to hear the outside world in a pretty natural sounding way with virtually no hiss. I thought the AirPods Max and AirPods Pro 2 were slightly more natural sounding in their transparency modes, but the Studio Pro were close. I was impressed with the voice calling performance. These have six microphones for noise canceling and voice calling, and the noise reduction during calls is very good. It's a big bump up from what you got with the previous studio headphones. Here's a test call I recorded that gives you a sense of the call quality. The note, the call is recorded via the internet, so you lose a little bit of fidelity in my voice. All right, I'm doing a test call with uh, John Falcone here in the streets of New York. I got, actually got a, uh, an ambulance going by here, John. I don't know what you can hear or not hear but it is very loud right now. Um, a little bit windy, too. There's a bit of wind in the tree. You can't really see that, but how do I sound overall? So if an ambulance is going by, that's a bit of a torture test, but what is interesting is that when you don't talk, uh, I don't hear any background noise whatsoever. By and large, it's uh, pretty easy to hear you. Okay, on to sound quality. These have totally new custom 40 millimeter drivers that Beats says have a dual layer design and a precise array of micro vents and fine acoustic mesh to optimize airflow and minimize distortion. As you might expect, they do sound better than the Studio 3 wireless. You get better clarity and definition along with tighter bass. It's really punchy, tight bass, and they sound really good overall and should work well with a variety of music genres. I went back and forth with these and the Sony WH-1000X Mark V, and the thing you notice is that these are a more aggressive sounding headphone, which you may or may not like. The highs are a little more sculpted and everything sounds a little more forward, including the mids where voices live. Both the Sony and the AirPods Max are a little bit more laid back by comparison. I didn't experience any listening fatigue, but did find myself dialing back the volume a bit and like the previous model, these have volume controls above and below the B button on the left ear cup that are easy to operate. I should also note that these can be used in two ways in wired mode. You can plug them into a standard 3.5 millimeter headphone port or connect them directly to your computer or smartphone's USB-C port. I plugged the USB-C cable into a Google Pixel 7 and fired up the Quobuz music streaming service that offers high-res tracks and things did sound slightly cleaner and clearer. So there is a little bump in sound quality. You can toggle between three EQ modes when you're in USB-C mode, beats signature sound and entertainment mode for movie watching and game playing, and a conversation mode that Beats says optimizes the frequency response for voice, which is ideal for making calls or listening to podcasts. No EQ settings of any kind are available when you're listening in wireless mode. You just get Beats signature sound. For this video, that's my quick take on sound quality, but if you hop over to my text review on CNET, I do offer a bit more in-depth discussion of sound quality, including what tracks I listen to. I'll finish up with battery life and some product comparisons. These are rated for 40 hours at 50% volume level, and you may even do better than that based on my experience. I use the headphone for four days for a couple hours a day, and the battery life indicator was at 72%, and I tend to listen at about 65% to 70% volume, so not 50%. Overall, these are very good performing headphones that I've been happy to add to my headphones rotation. 
However, as I said, they do have a couple of shortcomings that make them a harder sell against the likes of the excellent Sony 1000X Mark V, which have been getting discounted to $350 or less. And Bose is supposed to come out soon with a new set of flagship noise canceling headphones that should feature a new design and other improvements for around $400. The good news is that like the Beats earbuds offerings, the list price on these and the street price is sure to be different, particularly during the holiday buying season. We should see these at less than $300 and maybe even less than $280. That's still pricey, but if you're a fan of the Beats Studio line, these are definitely a big upgrade over the Studio 3 wireless, even if they don't really look different. I'm David Carnoy for CNET. Thanks for watching.